Hello, good evening, Namaskar, Aslam Alikum, Magandangabi to all my beautiful souls today. I'm your host for the evening, Shelly Bisht, a passionate educator, international speaker, host, writer, social activist, mompreneur, nation builder, and a change maker with 21 years of teaching experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with international global professionals as their global member and feel honored and privileged to host this enriching seminar. It's my delight to welcome you all to our Institution of Global Professionals International Free Webinar. Thank you all for joining us today in this scintillating evening. And it's my humble request and pleasure for all of you to stay with us till the end, for I'm sure you all will have many takeaways payoffs and learning from this webinar. My alluring gathering, the beautiful thing about learning is that nobody take it away from you. I'm always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. Live as you were to die tomorrow, learn as you were to live forever. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you will go. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So is the reason clear that what am I doing on this platform of IDP again? Being a host? Yes, it's correct. But also I get to learn a lot from all learned eminent speakers. So IGP is a blessing in disguise for me. Well, alluring gathering in each webinar, we have some new participants joining us. Therefore, let me give them a little briefing about IGP for their better understanding. Well, Institute of Global Professionals serves students and community resource providing holistic social work and education to create a profession generation. We believe that it's not effective to increase one's skill just by acquiring formal education. So we provide effective training and consultation to generate profession generation all over the world. Institute of Global Professionals is an educational institution which provides social work which is globally recognized. We organize our webinar, training, offline and online courses, etc. by best and trained speakers, coaches from all over the world to create the best learning platform for you all. Our mission is to empower people and enhance skill. I feel elated to announce that we have already completed 151 international webinars successfully. Wow, that's a good number. Congratulations, mm -hmm. IGP. If you want to share your knowledge in global community, please record your topics or videos and send us in our official email with video description, keywords. We'll upload it on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Facebook group. As much as your interaction with IGP, Facebook will remark you as a top fan. After sustaining a top fan badge till long, Facebook will notify your name to us and you will be eligible for our lifetime membership. I am also happy to announce that IGP has released YouTube channel for all, all attendees. You can join our previous programs recording with verified certificates. Please do subscribe to our channel and set the bell for daily updates. I expect that you all will be enlightened by your luminaries today and the wisdom which you will gain today will show help in your personal and professional growth. I hope the deliberations from our two distinguished speakers will help you to hone your soft skills and also to extend my best wishes for great success of the participants and wish that you all will remain with us for a long, fruitful association and journey. I extend my deepest gratitude in welcoming you all in today's session, which is our 152nd webinar on ethics in teaching. No doubt, an eye-catching topic, which reminds me of the six core characteristics of ethical teaching, that is knowledge, empathy, reasoning, appreciation for moral considerations, courage, and interpersonal skills. Well, I can't wait any longer to actually learn from this topic from our dignified great speakers. So without any further ado, let's have a power dose of empowering thoughts on this enlightening topic by inviting our eminent honorable two speakers from Philippines, home to world-renowned natural wonders like an underground river and rice terraces, incredible diving spots, rich in diversity, colorful public transportation, unique cuisine, vibrant festivals that showcase its colorful culture. So, tighten your seat belts, for I shall take you to the voyage of this magnificent event with IGP's mantra. Feed your skills with innovation, inspire, and impact. 
hold your breath ladies and gentlemen to meet our first speaker now it's time to move on to our first guest gracious rubeth ma'am welcome ma'am i extend a very warm welcome to you on our platform would you please like to introduce yourself to the audience please Good evening, Dr. Shelley. Thank you for being such a gracious and accommodating host. Thank you very much. Good evening, wherever you may be in the world. I'm, I am tasked primarily this evening to introduce myself to everybody. I am Maria Rubez Tronquillo Hippolito from the Philippines, an assistant professor at the Holy Angel University in Angeles City. I handle subjects like ethics, logic, humanities, big history one and big history two. And I've been in the teaching profession for 18 years. And having served as um, the School of Arts and Sciences Big History Coordinator for 2019 and 2020, um, I represented the university during the Asian Big History Symposium held at the JF Oberlin University in Tokyo, Japan, November of 2019. Recently, I also participated as a speaker in the International Big History Conference in India, along with other big historians. I received my Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy at the University of Santa Tomas and pursued my Master of Arts in Teaching to prepare my life in the academe. Currently, I'm the coordinator for Region 3 under the International Organization of Educators and Researchers Incorporated, or IOER, which happens to be a reputable organization for educators and researchers alike. In the future, I intend to foster in the marriage of philosophy and big history as a unique discipline and a valuable re research endeavor. And hopefully, I'd be um, invited again in the future by IGP. Thank you for having me. Good evening again. All right. I believe I'm supposed to begin, Ms. Shelley, with the presentation proper. Am I correct? Ms. Shelley, am I correct? I'm supposed to start now. This is how it feels to be on a live <laughs> live presentation. Ms. Shelley? Yes. Ma'am, she got disconnection. Okay. Okay. All right. Should I stop sharing first? No, no, no ma'am. You make you have to make presentation mode. Your slide is already visible. All right, all right. I can begin now. Am yeah. I correct? Yes. All definitely. right. Thank you very much to the audience again. Good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm. Allow me to once in a while glance into my outline so I won't get lost along the way. I'm as mentioned a while ago. I am glad you can make it to witness how two teachers and friends will serve as avenues for you to realize how lucky you are to have been under the care and guidance of a teacher or teachers for that matter. More so, we want you to appreciate yourselves in case you have decided to be in this very challenging yet rewarding profession. This webinar and sharing, and I wish to put an emphasis on the word sharing, will focus on ethics in teaching or the webbed and interrelated fields of ethics and teaching in general. Be with us for the next hour or so. It would be an honor that you stay with us because there would be two very interesting fields that we would try to explore, two very interesting fields which has affected our lives. Your presenters for today, um, later, she would be with me at, um, on the second half of the presentation, Dr. Wilma David Paras from the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy and yours truly, I'll be presenting the first half of this particular presentation. Again, Maria Rebeth Ronquillo Hippolito from the Holy Angel University. So that we would be guided, allow me to present our topic outline, which will initially unlock two very important terms. Then we will attempt to relay Colbert's stages of moral development with a modification, some sort of a tweak or a twist on its application to our lives as teacher. Further, as mentioned a while back, Dr. Paras will seamlessly make us understand just how important it is to foster ethical and or moral uprightness now more than ever. And from all these, let us gather our minds and hearts 
as we reflect on the beauty and the mystery of the teaching profession. Join us until the end for the conclusion because we would love to hear you share your heart, your mind, and soul as well. This early, we wish to tell everybody that we are no experts in the field. Uh, it, probably it's safer for us to say that we are passionate about teaching. We adhere to the principle that as teachers, we may never know everything, but we are here to celebrate us, you as teachers. We are here to share our stories and uh, sorry, inspire each other. Is your presentation yes, yes. in the presentation mood? I mean, yes, are the slides? Yes, Michelle. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm already okay. starting with the outline. No yes, problem. No worries. Okay, Shelly, it happens. Thank you very much. Let me proceed then. Let us begin our presentation by trying to unlock the terms as mentioned in the outline. Ethics and morality are used interchangeably in most cases. It may appear to be a blunder for some, but it is perfectly all right to use one to refer to the other. Why is this the case? Well, it is because ethics is technically a field in philosophy, focusing on what the Greeks referred to as ethos or a characteristic way of doing things. It may also be called moral philosophy because it seeks to probe on the intricacies. Intricacies of what? Of human freedom, of human rationality, of human impartiality, which we generally or collectively call as the basis for our ethical decisions. Morality, on the other hand, is an application thereof. It involves the individual, it involves the human person practicing what ethics dictates and fosters. Now, ethics, therefore, is the theory, while morality is the praxis. It is the practice of ethics. They are interrelated and may very well contribute to us, the human person, knowing, understanding, and practicing what we think is right or wrong, ethical or unethical, moral or immoral. Personally, how do I see it? Similar to what Plato said, I consider man as good by nature. There is nothing but the good seed planted in us. A quick reality check. I know you could relate to this in one way or the other. When you have done something wrong or evil, whether big or small, even if someone saw you perform it or not, you are bothered. You feel uncomfortable and restless. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, ma'am, I think the slides will look more better if it is shared on the full screen. If you can run the slideshow, actually. Full uh, screen. That's base all right, all right. That's basically yeah. how it appears on my end. I think right, you have I shared have. from the window. And if you can share it from the entire screen, you know, it will look all more right. attractive. Okay, I get your point. But then it doesn't show here on... on... Okay. I'll do some fixing. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. You can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I hope the audience would be patient enough. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's thank an interesting you, session you. and we are looking forward <laughs> for the wonderful presentation from you. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. I think what I can present here, what shows here is basically the live show that you're having. But on my end, I can see just I one think more. bottom right, bottom, yeah, uh, extreme yeah. right. There is an option for, I think, slide screen, slide show. When we already shared you the screen. Uh, uh, it's helping. We, we okay, tested then. it a while ago and it was working. <laughs> yes, uh, and, uh, okay. yes, now there's the same process. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to share your screen, then open your PPT. Okay. Make it now, mode. is it is it working? No. Can, can no, you no, see no. the full screen? No, 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 no ma'am. Ma you have to share your entire screen. Then you have to open your PPT. All Find right, it's it. open First right two. now. All right, I'll stop Make sharing first. Mode. Right. Yeah, stop sharing. Then share yeah. your screen with your entire screen. All right, I'll click share and share screen. I'll then click I can share, share screen, screen again. Then enter screen. But all I could hear, see here would be the entire screen and all I could see is the live feed that you're having right now. 
not the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, and, 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 I have yes, to yes. No, you don't need to. You yes. don't need to. You don't need to do PowerPoint. Just click on your entire screen and at the middle box, click on choose. Yes. Make exit full screen. Exit full screen. Yes. Now. Can you see it now? Move to the, yes. Now I can see. Move. Move to the next oh, okay. slide. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. All is. right. Now it's working. Thank you. <laughs> I no, think there's no, anything. No, it's looking oh, beautiful. Okay, actually. Okay. <laughs> this is how it feels to be on a live show. Now I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank <laughs> you to our audience. All right, so just so the, this particular presentation is clear, personally, how do I see it? I see man as by nature good. I share with Plato's idea. I consider him as man as by nature good. There is nothing but the good seed planted in us. A quick reality check, as I've mentioned a while ago, if in case you have done something evil or bad, whether it's big or small, whether someone saw you perform that evil de deed or not, you feel uncomfortable. You feel as if you're restless. On the other hand, if you performed something good, big or small, even if someone saw you perform it or not, you feel good inside. In fact, you're even prodded to perform the same thing over and over again because you know what it's like to have that sense of fulfillment, that sense of happiness, that attunement to your nature as a human person. We are, therefore, by nature, good. Right? Now, how can we unlock the mystery of the term teacher? This statement aptly encapsulates what we, they see and feel and pertaining to what a teacher sees and feels. Others may view a student or a person as a menace, a nobody, a reason to be problematic in their profession, but as a teacher who is passionate and loving, what she sees is potential. She sees a promise. She sees a seemingly annoying and unsightly weed into a future packed with many of life's wonders. Together, therefore, the teacher and the student, they unpack that future. Some see a weed, a teacher sees a wish, making it the noblest of all professions. Interestingly, the teaching profession is characterized by four profound ideals. Academic training as preparation, it is an undertaking, there is that formal and rigorous training in between, and a professional code which binds you all throughout. This is a lifelong task and a challenge geared towards leading others along the way. We fill our cups so that we may fill others as well. I wish to repeat that particular line I mentioned. We fill our cups so we may be able to fill others as well, so to speak. We give, not by taking, but by giving more and more and more and more. We gain more. Others gain more in the process. We can aptly say, therefore, a teacher takes a hand opens a, a mind, and most importantly, touches a heart, which may touch others as well in the process, and the cycle goes on and on. At times we even say, we look forward to going to class not only because of the knowledge we may obtain, but because we see the teacher as a source of inspiration. Their lives and actions, most importantly their character, allow us to look into ours so that we may be a source of light and inspiration as well. Now, truly, what the teacher is, is more important than what he teaches. But the question remains, are teachers born to be this way? I, I, I'm basically borrowing what Lady Gaga said. But is character developed in the course of one's practice of the teaching profession? Or is it something we develop over the years? The greater the experience, the grander the ethical and moral realizations and responsibilities are. I'm thinking it is a combination of many things. Others are obligated to be morally upright because the profession says so. It's the profession dictating that they're supposed to be that way. Whereas others may have developed character and values as they trudge through the teaching journey. But over and above all these, teachers decide to be so because their students' future depends on them. And I believe more than just an obligation, I find that as a responsibility. 
what they are signals what their future students may become. That's how hard it is. That's how we are seen as a role model. Truly, it may be seen as a curse at times, if that's how you see it. More so, it's supposed to be seen as a blessing. Now, to further explain what I mean, let me share with you Lauren Kohlberg's Stages of Moral Development. It's basically a topic we discuss in ethics. It may be a study conducted among children belonging to different age groups. That's originally how the study or the experiment actually started. But I intend to tweak it a bit, to modify it a bit, so that it would conform to how teachers, in my opinion, develop themselves professionally, personally, and ethically in the course of time. This is some sort of an analogy I did with the theory by presenting real-life teacher concerns. I know at one point you'd be able to relate to the things that I'd be mentioning. Allow me to share this slide. Now, I know it's bad practice for teachers out there to present everything in one go. Am I correct? But allow me to do that right now because I want you to see the comparison between and among the stages at one glance. All right? Now, basically, what you have here on the far left are, are the stages mentioned by Kohlberg. And the description you can see at the very middle of the table would be the description Lawrence Kohlberg also mentioned. But why, what I intended to present to you, just so you'd be able to see how beautiful and mysterious the teaching profession is, would be the last item, the last column that you see on the far right. All right? Obedience and punishment. Basically, how is it characterized? There is no distinction between what is right and why you do something right simply because you avoid punishment, right? A young child would actually uh, do the right thing simply because of one particular motivational force. I wish to avoid being punished, right? If we relay that particular instance to a teacher's life, you'd probably say, I have to be in class because I do not want to be reprimanded by the dean, right? You follow what is right simply because you wish to avoid punishment. That's the first level. As we progress, you'd be able to see what self-interest is about. For Kohlberg, basically it means you are only seeking for the pleasure of the self. It's me, myself, and I. That's the reason why we included the term hedonism. Hedonistic, pleasure, benefit for the, for the self. Therefore, from you trying to think of the punishment, you try to shift your attention towards the rewards this time. So if we... Um, apply that in a teacher's life, you'd probably say, I have to perform well, so I will be promoted. The next stage, under conventional stage, conformity and interpersonal accord. Very obvious from the term, you conform simply because you wish to have or seek approval. It's because you wish to have an interpersonal relationship with others. You wish to be seen as a good boy, a good girl, a, a, among your colleagues, among the administrators. So if you would try to um, relate that to a teacher's life, you'd probably say, I have to share my resources so they will see me as an ideal colleague, right? But you do not stay stuck on that particular level of morality. You could progress eventually into what we refer to as authority and social order. Again, obviously, as mentioned in the term, what you're after, your motivational force would be everything should be in order, right? That is your main goal. So if you try to relate that to a teacher's life, you'd probably say, I ought, I have to, I should submit the grades on time to prevent glitches during the enrollment. What is your motivational force? So that they won't see me as the culprit if in case there would be problems in the enrollment simply because I did not submit the grades. I want everything to be in order. All right. Last two, bear with me. Post-conventional, it would be social contract, which means that what you're after is the mutual benefit and re reciprocity you gain between and among the persons you're in the society, you're, the persons you're with in the university, all right? Your colleagues probably. So you respect their individual rights. There is nothing wrong with that, okay? It's because it's a give and take relationship. Now, focusing on the teacher side would probably say, uh, under social contract, you'd probably say, I must present my lessons with gusto, with mastery, so my students will also prepare for every meeting. What's the basic reason why you prepare for a meeting? So that my students would be prepared as well, right? 
there is that mutual reciprocity and benefit. So does it mean that if in case they would not be performing well, your performance would wane as well in the process, right? But among all of these, there's a need for us as teachers, and I believe that we've been practicing this. Everything is but a part of the job. You um, following your superiors, you um, performing well in class so that your, your colleagues along with your students would admire you, probably see you as a source of inspiration. But I wish to focus our attention on the universal principles because uh, under the universal principles, morality this time would mean you transcending mutual benefit. To transcend mutual benefit means even if somebody else doesn't give you back what you give them, you continue to give, 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 and give in even more. It is because you see that your life as a teacher is instrumental for them to see their future as well. What do we say, therefore, as a teacher? I want to be the best in everything I do because their future depends on me. Universal principles, the future, our students, through our hands. It may be challenging, but it is worth the toil, believe me. Borrowing, therefore, from our university, or university Holy Angel University's trusted speaker on character and values, um, Dr. Emmanuel Rentoy, let me summarize the table I showed to you above through these. Are you a teacher who says, I do not want to get in trouble? Right? That's basically stage one, level one. Or are you the type of teacher who would say, I want a reward, period. Nothing more, nothing less. Are you the type of teacher who would probably say, I want to please somebody. I want to please everybody. Fourth stage, are you the type of teacher who would probably say, I follow the rules no matter what, because I'm after social order, right? I'm after everything being spick and span. Or are you the type of teacher who'd probably say, I am considerate of other people. It is because I want them to be considerate to me as well. Or are you the highest type of teacher, one who is capable of being morally matured to say, I have a personal code of honor and I follow it. So the question is, who is the teacher then? A good teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way for others. For the next topics, I give the spotlight to Dr. Wilma David Paras. My partner, go ahead. Shelly, Dr. Shelly. Uh, I'm there, but I, yeah. Yeah, this part great, would be her great. part. Yeah, 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 yes, great. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now, uh, Ma'am Rubait, uh, that's what we call a flamboyant presentation on ethics and teaching. <laughs> Loved your deliberation with best presentation, I'm telling you. And I'm sure <laughs> the participants must have got great knowledge from your worthy pulse of wisdom as I am getting here. So a big thank you for sparing your invaluable <laughs> time from your busy schedule and empowering all of us with your thoughtful deliberation and disquisition. I'm really thankful that uh, you have given such good insights, you know, each and every thank word you, spoken you. was worth. I would still be back later towards the end for the conclusion. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Have I'm a little forward. drama to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank yes, you. Come I'm looking you. forward. That's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Now, audience. After such a terrific start of the session, let's proceed to our next distinguished guest, Dr. Wilma David Paris. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Wilma David Paris. And I will be honored, ma'am, if you share your journey and achievements so far with all of us. So hello, ma'am. 
Hello, ma'am. Dr. Shelly, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. I'm fine. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. It's Shelly. A it's a delight. Yeah, if we yeah. would something about you. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. Good evening, world. Good evening, Philippines. Okay, I would just like to make a brief introduction of myself. I am Dr. Wilma David Paras from my beautiful country, the Philippines. Of course, I love my own country. I'm currently teaching at the Premier Maritime School in the Philippines, Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, located at San Narciso, Zambales. I've been at the Academy PMMA for almost a decade now. I was in the academy for more than three decades now. Do not count my age. <laughs> I was a foreign language teacher at Sharjah British School and United International Private School at Dubai United Arab Emirates for more than nine years. I am a writer, an author, and a mother of four lovely children, namely Mary, Mary Claudine, Mary Antoinette, Jenny, and Joanne. I pursued my postgraduate degree at the Columban College and graduated with Master of Arts in English Language Teaching and uh, graduated with Doctor of Education in 2017. Okay. Um, I, I would, uh, before I proceed to my topic tonight, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Institute of Global Professionals for giving me this opportunity to be once again invited as a resource speaker for this international webinar the second time around. Thank you very much, IGP. Again, um, good evening, one everyone. Thing before you present your presentation, I must compliment you for the amazing profile which we got to know from you. And it deserves a huge round of applause, fam. Okay. And in fact, Thank after you. hearing you out, I'm looking forward to even get a more insight from the presentation which you're going to show over here. So welcome once again on IGP and we're looking forward for the great insights. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. Okay. I would like to start with the need for ethics. Now more than ever. All right. What is ethics? We know that ethics is used by everyone every day. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, Ethics is defined as the science of morals, moral principles or code. Moral meaning standard of conduct, which means to act or behave in a particular or in a controlled manner. Medical practitioners take the Hippocratic Oath. It is an oath historically taken by physicians and other healthcare professionals swearing to practice medicine ethically. Now, magicians take oath to guard against exposing the secrets of magic. In other words, ethics is the discipline dealing with what is good and bad with moral duty and obligation. Okay, now let's go to essential qualities of a teacher. Right? Who are we? We who are we really? Who are we as a teacher? Okay. Now, great teachers may also possess the number of wonderful qualities like a sense of humor, personality, flexibility, kindness, leadership, classroom management, a calm demeanor experience and the ability to multitask we know for a fact that teachers are multitasking okay these are the qualities the best teachers universally possesses okay now let's go to teacher as a role model okay i i would like to emphasize the word role model okay a teacher should be a role model not a fashion model all right Teachers 
should act as a role model to their students and to the community as well because no people can rise above the level of its teachers according that's according to the national policy on education a teacher should be very particular with his manner of dressing style and content of communication okay a teacher should not be wearing plunging necklines fitted jeans inside a classroom or any daring clothes which will distract the attention of his or her students choice so choices of dress dress styles hairstyles matter most to the students likewise his her content of communication should be refined and well chosen besides being moral exemplars teachers are also expected to model to model ethical principles through their pedagogy all right let's go to teachers character and personality what makes a great teacher okay a great teacher should be expert should have that expertise in communication skills a good teacher should be superior in listening as well all right let's have first um in addition to being good communicators okay good teachers also happen to be excellent listeners as the turkish proverb says if speaking is silver then listening is gold okay of course effective communication only happens when at least two parties are actively involved in the process together and the only way to know if communication is heard is by asking and listening to the answer so deep knowledge and passion of their subject matter is also important no? a teacher should have a thorough knowledge and passion of her subject it is said that the teacher during this time should be at least one book ahead of his or her students a mastery of his or her subject matter is very important let's a teacher another personality of a great teacher the ability to build caring relationships with students all right this is very important to every teacher teaching is i agree an act of caring but I, uncom I am uncomfortable with the notion that I best express my concerns for students by trying to secure their agreement with my own values. I would like to indicate two reasons for opposing this method of teaching values. The first reflects my conception of ethics. The second, my defense of a professional relationship between teachers and students. You'd think that the most important quality for a teacher to possess would be knowledge, since that was the job is all about. After all, sharing knowledge, but no matter how knowledgeable a person is, if they cannot convey what they know to others in a way that is not understandable but engaging, the knowledge itself is useless. What about our relationship with our students? You'd think that the most important quality of a teacher to possess would be knowledge, since that's what the job is all about. After all, sharing knowledge, but no matter how knowledgeable a person is, if they can convey what they know to others, the knowledge is itself useless. Anyone who has done it no, what's done of it knows that teaching is one of the hardest jobs there is. The secret that keeps them going is that great teachers really, really want to be great teachers. And they'll stop at nothing do, to succeed. A great teacher do almost anything to help their students. They always make time and they're always willing to help. And if something doesn't work, they will work tirelessly that's the word tirelessly until they find a solution okay so teaching can be sometimes or not sometimes almost all of the time no? very difficult it requires that individuals okay be friendly and approachable so there should be another great 
uh, character and personality of a teacher should have is excellent preparation and organization skills, should have strong work ethics, community building skills, and high expectations of all. All right, let's go to the next. Teacher's personality. Yeah, this is very important. All right. A teacher, one of the teacher's personality should be radiant, okay? Should be smart, pleasing, all right? Impressive, okay? The Your appearance should be, uh, you need to dress properly, you need to be presentable, you need to be refined, you have to have pleasant manners, because everybody is looking at you, especially your, your students. They will be scrutinizing you, criticizing you. Okay. Whatever you do, whatever you do, no? All right. Our, uh, teachers and their responsibilities. A teacher is constantly under the scrut scrutiny of his or her students and the society. Yeah, this is what I'm about to say a while back. No, A teacher is constantly under the scrutiny of his or her students and the society. This is very true, no? All right. Um, there, should, uh, there should be... You should be very much aware of your act. Okay? A teacher should... Um, make professional growth continues through study and research and contribution of knowledge to be able for the teacher to come to uh, to this contribute knowledge to his or her students all right teachers and students that there should be love and affection between a teacher and a student a female student or a female teacher rather should act like a mother to her students and should show love, compassion, and affection to her students, irrespective of their school performance. Okay, this is love and affection, okay? Uh, a teacher should encourage students to improve his or her grades and to strive hard to achieve their goals and to become better person. A teacher should refrain from physical or corporal punishment sexual abuse, mental and emotional harassment because these acts are against the law. Obligations towards parents, community, and society. So a teacher should have these obligations towards parents, community, and society. First, relationship of trust with parents guardians in the interest of all-round development of students by building relationship with parents in, the, in their children's lives teachers contribute to the creation of safe and healthy learning environments for children in a partnership all partners share responsibilities power and decision making and mutual trust and respect teachers link together students other teachers, school administrators, families, and community members to foster the learning success and healthy development of their students. In the school, so let's have recognized that education is a public service and strive to keep the public informed of the educational programs. In the school, Teachers are public servants to whom they render their service among their students. Teacher salaries and other benefits are from people's taxes. Therefore, they must live by the rules and regulations and norms of conduct and discipline that are at all times expected of a public servant. Okay. So teachers move towards self-regulation to adhere to the ethical principles listed in the Code of Professional Ethics for teachers. All right. Um, there should be standards for the behavior and professional practice of teachers. 
code of ethics, I said, uh, and code of conduct, standards of professional practice. A set of asp aspirational goals based around the values of integrity, respect, and responsibility. Whereas code of conduct is a more detailed set of standards for professional and personal conduct and professional com competence based on the values set out in the code of ethics. And then the, the last one would be standards of professional practice. This is a set of standards which apply to all registered teachers that articulate what all teachers should know and be able to do. All right. At this juncture, Mom Rubeth will be discussing the fourth part, which is the reflection. Mom Rubeth. Partner, thank you, Mom Wilma. Can you hear me, everybody? Can I be heard now? I need to speak something yes, over here. I need to appreciate okay. her, actually. <laughs> oh, she has okay, done okay. a wonderful job, you know, no doubt. This was an ostentatious <laughs> presentation, Dr. Wilma David Powers on ethics and teaching. I'm obliged for your marvelous insights and thoughts. It might have sure helped our educators and learners today. At least I have learned a lot from you. Thank you so much for giving us your precious time from your mm -hmm. Choco Block timetable. This session will be effective for our audience because you shared your insights and knowledge with us. So no doubt our viewers will be benefited. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. William David Paris. Now I invite Ma'am Rubey to share her afterthoughts or her concluding remarks on this so that the presentation actually becomes complete with her exactly. views. So okay. over to Ma'am yeah. Rubey. Okay, thank you very much. I would still have my partner around. All right, thank you. Yeah, sure. We're gearing towards our second to the last topic, the very heart, the very soul of this presentation, our reflection. Allow us to share this YouTube video. All right, allow us to share this YouTube video so you may know how we view our roles as teacher. Enjoy, everybody. Teachers matter because we learn different things every day. <clears throat> they push you to always believe that even if something is hard, you can still achieve it. They're constantly encouraging me, and they're trying to make me reach that stretch goal. My teacher has taught me to worry about my education, what life will be when my future if I don't finish high school. Mr. Coffee's taught me how to count. She's definitely taught me to not be biased. He's taught me some great science. She makes me look for more sources. For me to see that somebody was just like me and was able to succeed, <laughs> she has inspired me to be a better person. I love me. Good. Yeah. Having a great teacher makes things possible. He's my dad. He's my mom. He's my friend. He's my psychiatrist. He kind of believes in me <laughs> unconditionally, so that way it's easier to believe in yourself. What can I say? Probably my teacher taught me how to count. She allowed me to look for sources so that my research work would be better. If my student would say, she's not only my dad, she's my mother, she's my friend, she's my psychiatrist. I believe that even if at times the pay isn't too much, you'd probably say, I would keep on doing the same thing over and over again. What about you, partner? What do you have to say, Miss Wilma? Help them ahead, realize Wilma. how they can shape the future as leaders and managers by mm -hmm. nurturing an environment that enables them to become better person today than yesterday. Okay, they should have integrity, uh, respect, responsibility. Okay, um, the quality of state of being responsible, such as moral, legal, and mental accountability. That's it, partner. Okay. 
Go ahead. Take it away, my dear partner. Okay. Um, let's go now to the uh, Q&A portion, question and answer. Okay. I have here ethical cases for teachers to ponder. Okay. You can choose the letter of the best answer. All right. Uh, number one question, or what, number one case, every teacher has the freedom to worship and to attend the church of his choice. However, he shall not use his or her position to influence his or her students to follow his path, to follow his faith, sorry, or to blank, letter A, give a testimony or a homily, B, proselyte. C, indoctrinate. And letters D, preach. Okay, you can start choosing the letter of the best answer. Okay, maybe I'll count five, four, three, two, one before we go to the next question. Okay, so the uh you hold on your breath for the correct answer which do you think is the correct answer in here letter a give a testimony or a homily b proselyte c indoctrinate or letter d preach the correct answer is letter b proselyte proselyte means to convert as to a new faith or cause okay number two Let's go to question number two. Which of the following must a teacher provide in the community for moral, social, educational, and civic betterment? Letter A, leadership. Letter B, monetary contributions. Letter C, hard work. And letter D, advice. I repeat, which of the following must a teacher provide in the community for moral, social, educational, and civic betterment? Letter A, leadership, B, monetary contributions, C, hard work, and D, advice. The correct answer is leadership. Of course, leadership is the correct answer here. Number three. Research is encouraged among teachers. They have the privilege or exp of expounding the products of their researcher researchers. If the results of his research are found to be inimical, inimical sorry, to the interest of the state, what should the teacher do? Letter A, bring the results to a proper authorities for remedial action. Letter B, keep quiet. After all, the results are are his. Letter C, publish the results in the national papers and trumpet the results. And letter D, publish the results in a book and ask the government to buy the results. What do you think is the correct answer in here? These are ethical cases for teachers to ponder. The correct answer is letter A, bring the results to proper authorities for remedial action. Okay. You should not be doing, a teacher should not be doing letter B, letter C, and letter D. All right. Let's go to number four. <laughs> Question number four. A teacher, or case number four, a teacher may apply for a vacant position as long as letter A, he, she responds the system of selection. <laughs> And that all candidates are given the opportunity to be considered. Letter B, he, she obtained a doctoral degree. C, the position is really vacant. And letter D, his educational background corresponds to the position. What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer here is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Letter A, he, she should respond the system of selection and that all candidates are given the opportunity to be considered. Right. Let's go to question number five or case number five. Miss Smith, 
decided to quit teaching in favor of taking care of her sick mother, what should she do? Letter A, she shall bring home all her data and her records of the students. Letter B, she should not share her data and files. Letter C, she should organize for the incoming teacher such records and other data as they are necessary to carry on the work. And letter D, she should return all her chalks, pens, erasers, everything to the school principal. What do you think is the correct answer? Five, four, three, two, one, time is up. The correct answer here is letter C. Right. I hope everybody is getting the correct answer. Num letter, number six. Let's go to number six. In order to influence Miss Johnson, spend more time in teaching her son, Richie, how to read. Mrs. Anderson baked a chocolate cake. When Richie brought the cake to Miss Johnson, what should she do? Letter A, accept the cake. After all, she did not ask for it. Letter B, accept the cake because it is free. Letter C, do not accept the cake. And letter D, ask Richie to bring the cake to the principal's office. Okay, choose the correct answer. Are you done? Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer here is letter C. Do not accept the cake. Right. It is somewhat a bribery. Okay. Let's go to number seven. A teacher shall place premium on blank as the primary principle of personal behavior in all relationships with others and in all situations. <laughs> this is very important. A teacher shall place premium on blank as the primary principle of personal behavior in all relationships with others and in all situations. Letter A, is it humility? Letter B, self-discipline? Letter C, professionalism. And letter D, faith in God. Which do you think is the correct answer in here? A, B, C, or D? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. The correct answer here is self-discipline. A teacher shall place premium <laughs> discipline or self-discipline. Yeah as the primary principle of personal behavior. Let's go to number eight. Number eight. Case is, what should Miss White do with the complaints of Mrs. Kim Chan on her teaching strategies? <laughs> Letter A, dismiss the complaints. Letter B, hear the complaints with sympathy and understanding. Letter C, Strike back at Mrs. Chan, saying her child is not really intelligent. And letter D, bring the matter to court. Which do you think is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? Time is up. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer in here is letter B. Hear the complaints with sympathy and understanding. All right. Let's go to number nine. Number one case is, why should teachers vote during elections? Okay. Our, our right to suffrage. Letter A, it is their constitutional right and responsibility. Letter B, congressmen approve the budget of schools. Letter C, their license as a professional teacher will be revoked if they will not vote. And letter D, Principals will see to it that teachers in their schools cast their ballots. Which do you think is the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? Time is up. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer in here is letter A. A teacher should vote during elections because it is the teacher's constitutional right and responsibility. Okay, let's go to number 10. 
No matter the degree of offense the learner committed, the teacher shall blank letter A, not inform any problem to the parents of the students, letter B, not inflict physical harm on the learner, letter C, not bring any student or learner to the principal's or dean's office, and letter D, not elevate the matter to the proper authorities. Okay. Which, which do you think is the correct answer? No matter the degree of offense the learner committed, the teacher shall... What's the correct answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? Time is up. Five, four, three, two, one. This The correct answer is letter B. Not inflict physical harm on the learner or on the student okay otherwise we will be charged of corporal punishment we are not allowed to harm any students all right let's go to case number 11 the teacher is a human being endowed with life for which is the highest obligation to live with blank at all all times, whether in school, in the home, or elsewhere. Is it letter A, thoughtfulness, B, humility, C, dignity, and letter D, pride? The teacher is a human being endowed with life for which is the highest obligation to live with? The correct answer is letter C, dignity. That's the first and foremost important virtue. Okay? We should... The highest obligation to live with dignity at all times, whether the teacher is in school, at home, or anywhere else. All right. So letter C is the correct answer. Let's go to number 12. How will a teacher show a good reputation with respect to financial matters? Okay. Letter A. Sells t-shirts and bags to well-to-do parents to augment his or her income. Letter B, pays immediately the school fees she borrowed. Letter C, pays for the meals of other teachers. Letter D, settles all his or her debts and loans on time. Which do you think is the correct answer in here? How will a teacher show a good reputation with respect to financial matters? The correct answer in here is... Letter D, settles all his or her debts and loans on time. Okay, let's go to question number 13. Miss Thompson is said to equate authority with power. What does she do? A, intimidate students. B, call students' names. C, shames and retaliates against students. Letter D, all of the above. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. The correct answer is all of the above. All right. Number 14. Let's go to number 14. Whose interest is the teacher's first and foremost? Letter A. Is it the government? Is it letter B, the dean or the principal and the management staff? Is it letter C, the learner? Or is it letter D, his or her own interests? Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer here is the learner, the students, okay? That is our students or our learners are our first and foremost interest, nothing else, okay? Last number, number 15. Which of the following is not, not, take a look at the word not, commendable act of a teacher? Is it letter A, maintain a dignified personality at all times? B, recognition of God as guide of his own destiny? Letter C, submission to the press and the justifiable criticisms against another teacher? And letter D, all of the above. Which do you think is the correct answer in here? The five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer here is letter C. A teacher should not submit to the press 
any justifiable criticism against another teacher. Okay, because a teacher should know that what you do to others, is what you want to do to uh, the, the, uh, the golden rule, I mean, do not do unto others what you would like others to do unto you. Okay, that ends our uh, question and answer portion. I hope everybody got perfect score. Okay, how many got how many got them all? 15, 14, 13, 12, and so forth and so on. Congratulations. If you got 15, you're doing great as a good teacher. Okay, 14, 13, okay, moderately, 12, 11, 10, satisfactorily, then below 9, fair. Okay. And below, <clears throat> okay, that's the um, rubrics. All right, Ma'am Rubet. Yes. Uh, let's what go now to our <laughs> conclusion. What more could we ask part? for? We have a teacher, a game master, <laughs> and a speaker all rolled into one. <laughs> all in one. <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed the, the presentation. <laughs> I can yeah. see it very well. I can see it very <laughs> yes. well. The tone yes. of your voice speaks a lot about how you're enjoying this presentation. Thank yeah. you very much, Dr. Wilma. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Let's go to the fifth are... part of our presentation, exactly. the conclusion, exactly. ma'am. Yes, right. exactly. We are about to embark on the last part of our sharing through mm -hmm. a literary piece to be presented to us by Dr. Wilma David. Afterwards, we'll be taken to some sort of a um, some sort of a flashback at memory lane, all right, through the video that we'll be presenting. Dr. Wilma, go ahead, please. Yes, ma'am. I would like to read an epilogue from <laughs> one of my favorite writers, Geoffrey Chaucer. Okay. Threadbare the little outer coat he had, for he was still to get a benefice and thoughts of worldly office were not his, for he would rather have beside his bed 20 books arrayed in black or red. He gave to study all his care and heed, nor ever spoke a word beyond his need. And that was said in form, respectfully and brief and quick and charged with meaning high. Harmonious with virtue was his speech, and gladly would he learn and gladly teach. All right. This epilogue remind us that the ideal of a teacher as a scholar, unsolved by worldly interests, and dedicated to, to the pursuit of truth, has survived and dedicated from Chaucer's time to our own time in the 21st century. Yet some doubt whether many remain who would gladly learn and gladly teach. Universities, we are told, have been converted into educational conglomerates and less harmonious with virtue is their speech. Uh, to sum it up, ethical education inside school settings is not about making our students more ethical. It's about arming them with the tools to develop their own ethical decision-making process. And as a teacher, we believe that once a teacher, always a teacher. That's it, ma'am. Amen to that. And to salute, <laughs> our, <laughs> to salute our noble and passionate <laughs> teachers, teachers like us, teachers oh, who yeah. are part of the audience this evening, please let us okay. all watch this. Please be um, uh, reminded how important we are in this world because their future depends on us. Enjoy, please. Yes. Well, I knew him as Mr. Carbonero. Patricia Lovelace. Uh, was my ninth and tenth grade English teacher. Was our history and science teacher. She was typically the teacher that you got if you weren't doing too well in school. Yeah, I was kind of lost without her. I just remember wanting to walk into the classroom. There are some times I just in high school because it's so hard. Everyone's just 
middle school is kind of the time that I started getting uh, bullied. She was just so good at what she did and instilled that confidence in me. It was about four years after graduation, my life got interrupted. And it wasn't until the end of the 80s um, when I started going back to school again. Encouraging to be myself. Sounds cheesy, but... <laughs> she just simply said she was like, well, prove them wrong. Thank you, and one day I, I um, plan to try to repay him. I don't know if he knows the, the full, the full, just like how big it was for me personally. I miss you and I appreciate you so much. And thank you for teaching me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. What are you doing here? Hello, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't feel like you're making an impact. And to be told that, that you have something that I need to hear. I was going to say thank you. You love me out of myself. All right. Um, we encourage you. That was an amazing uh, video clips, ma'am. Okay. Maybe all it takes is for a student to see us again and say thank you for what you did. A thank you would be enough, right, Miss David? Mm -hmm. Therefore, yeah. can I ask you to, to read this last part of our slide? Second to the last part. Okay. Go all ahead. right. Um, I felt a bit emotional with with, with the video <laughs> clip I saw, no? Because uh, I, I have uh, really, watched that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit teary eyed I have watched because it, uh, uh, many times. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's moving. A teacher is really a difficult task, a difficult profession, among other professions, no? From day one to the last day of your life, no? Until we grow old, we could see our students as they succeed, no? So the last part would be, we encourage you. Okay. Go ahead. Go Light ahead. their world. Okay. Because, because their future depends on you. As mentioned by Jan Steinbeck, I have come to believe that a great teacher is a great artist and that there are as few as there are any other great artists. It might even be the greatest of the arts since the medium is the mind and the spirit of the human person, the mind and the spirit of our students. With this, we say thank you very much and maraming salamat po. Good evening, everybody. Right. Good evening. I'll stop sharing now. Good evening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. I'll stop sharing now so I can see the faces of, of many people I, I wish to see. All I could see is the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much again. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you, my you partner. Well. Thank you, Dr. All right. I must tell you, both of you, you know, the partners have done such a fabulous <laughs> job. Not even the presentation was good. First, earlier, I was just admiring the presentation. But when you played those clippings, you know, it was such emotional, sensitive, and touching, you know, the parents, I mean, the children and the teachers, the educators all over and whatever they spoke for uh, their teachers, it was lovely. It was lovely. It was actually the tribute given by them for their teachers. So lovely, lovely presentation. And uh, the team, which I saw on the screen is superb. So I must give you two thumbs up for the great job you have done. It was commendable. The perfect tuning, you, the perfect slides and the perfect deliberation along with the video clipping, it was something very unique. 
and i hope the audience might have loved it too so superb thanks a lot thank you thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you dr shali yeah thank you ma'am so my worthy attendees let me take you all to a most exciting session of the <laughs> webinar yeah you are right it's time for the quiz competition i invite all of you to participate energetically well so here we have a live quiz competition i request each one of you to kindly log in through www.slido.com and enter the code igp quiz that two in capital letters and it is attached in the comment box you can see the link 102 attendees have already joined in and i request the others who have joined the session late to kindly log in www.slido.com and enter the code igp quiz and this code is even given in the link i have 116 participants who have joined the quiz with me and one more thing i want to share with you all that when you enter your name please enter the complete name because that name will be coming in the certificate so i request to all the participants to come with the complete name because whatever you enter that comes so uh, in the certificate so now it is interesting to tell you that 164 have logged in with me and yes the energetic participants are still logging in because i want as many participants as possible to enjoy this fantastic quiz which we'll have yes so i have 179 who are already logged in with us for this live quiz yes the scores are increasing i think it will touch yes it has gone beyond 200 and yes the participants are still uh, logging in and i request the others also to join the quiz please log in through www.slido.com and enter the code igp quiz i g p q u i z that is the course for today so i have 209 with me it has increased yes incredible it is 232 right now which i can see on the screen and yes the numbers are increasing lovely to see the energetic participants with us it is 234 244247 and please enter your entire complete name when you log in because that name will be coming in the certificate please join with your complete name because that will be directly printed on our certificates top 10 will be awarded with quiz completion certificates so it's a golden opportunity let me find out who all are the top winners with us and yes this is a good news the scores are increasing i have 273 participants 274 now who will be playing quiz with us and this is the live quiz you all will enjoy the energetic 10 questions which i will be showing you on screen 
I hope the numbers touch 300 because I already have 291 who have already joined for this quiz. Fantastic. Lovely participants. I love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. 295, 96, 297. Three more to go. Three more to go. 298, 300. Wow, great. It, it's magical. It's magical because it's increasing further. You know, we have 300 plus participants who will be joining with us for the live quiz. 310, 311. Fantastic. It, it's, it's always nice to look at the energy of the participants. Lovely. It is three to five. And yes, the participants are still logging in. And I request others also who have not logged in, please kindly log in through www.slido.com with your complete name so that it, is, it gets reflected in the certificate directly. And the code is given in the comment box. Let me tell you once over again that the top 10 will be awarded with quiz completion certificates. So I can see 342 participants with us. 345. Great. 347. Lovely audience. I wish you all the best. 350. 352. Okay. Yes. So let us begin. This is the question number one on the screen right in front of you. Let me just tell the question to you. The main teaching of situation ethics is option A, flexibility and a gap. B, duty and consistency. C, virtue and balance. Let me see what the audience will log in for. Three to one. And let me check. Let me check. 18% have voted for option A, 29% have voted for option B, and 53% have voted for option C. Let me check out the answer for you. What's the correct answer? Wow, the correct answer is 18%. That means this question was tricky. Okay, let's move further to the second question. This is the leaderboard in front of you. And the second question is, creating effective teaching teams will generally not be a part of your work in early childhood education. Whether the statement is true or false. Very interesting question. Let me see what my participants will be giving me. It's true or false. Let me find out. So maximum of you... 73% have gone for false and 27% have gone for true. Let me check out the answer. And the correct answer is 73%. That is false. And yes, your guess was very much correct. 73% is the correct answer. Yes, false. This is the leaderboard. And we switch over to question number three, which says, the teaching strategy that is the least explicit and most student-centered is option A, lecture. Option B is discussion. And option C is inquiry. Let me figure it out what our participants will be logging in for, whether option A, B, or C. So 29% uh, have gone for option A, 32% have gone for option B, and 39% have gone for option C. Let me check out the answer for you. And the correct answer is, Option C is the correct answer, 39%. Very good guess. This is the leaderboard. And when we proceed to question number four, in problem-based learning, students learn by option A, doing, option B, memorizing, and option C, listening carefully. Let me find out what you log in for, option A, option B, or option C. So, goodness, 82% for A, 3% for B, and 16% for C. Let me find out the answer for you. Correct. Guess was absolutely correct. Option A, 82%. Congratulations for this question. Let's check the leaderboard. 
This is the leaderboard in front of you. And now we proceed to question number five. It says, virtue ethics is known for two philosophers. A, Bentham and Meg. B, Aristotle and Echonas. C, Abbott and Costello. Let me find out what answer is very close with our audience today. And it is... 14% for option A, 76% for option B, and 10% for option C. Let me find out the answer. The correct answer says 76%, an intelligent audience indeed. The correct guess, B. Option B is the correct answer. This is the leaderboard in front of you. And now I proceed further to question number six, which says, what do you love about teaching? A, share the joy of learning with students and educators. B, encourage students for learning. C, inspired and d is all of the above let me find out what my energetic participants log in for a b c or d one percent for option a one percent for option b zero percent for this and 98 percent for option d let me find out what is the correct answer for this wow superb option d is the correct answer and an intelligent audience have already voted for 98 percent congratulations this is the leaderboard. And then uh, let's proceed further. Question number seven. What do you like about teaching from home? A, working in pajamas. Interesting. B, bathroom breaks whenever I want. C, eating at a normal pace. And D is all of these. Very interesting question. And I'm looking forward to what my audience will be giving me, A, B, C, or D. 3% for A, 1% for B, 7% for C, and 89% for D. I'll also wait, vote for uh, uh, D. Let me find out the answer. Absolutely, your vote is with me. 89% D is the correct option. Of course, all of the above. This is the leaderboard. And then we proceed further with question number eight, which is true or false. Care for creation is a social dis social teaching whether this is statement is true or false i repeat care for creation is a social teaching whether it is true or false let my audience participants tell me what is the correct answer uh 96 percent have voted for true four percent for false and the correct answer is absolutely true 96 percent you were very much correct. This is the leaderboard. And now we proceed to the next question. Question number nine, which says, teaching younger students about clean water. Let me read out the question number nine. This is the leaderboard. Let's proceed to question number nine. And it says, Teaching younger students about clean water and conservation would be an example of A. Teaching B. Community service and C. Service learning Very intelligent question And let me find out what my participants will be logging for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And here we go 12% A 56% B 32% C Find out the answer now And it is Option number C, 32%. This was a tricky guess. Tricky question indeed. This is a leaderboard in front of you. And let's proceed further with the last question of the quiz. And that is, which teaching method is the best for retaining information? A, listening. B, presentation. And C, doing the real thing. Let me find out what is the correct guess of our Participants over here, A, B, or C. 6% for A, 5% for B, and 89% for C. Let me find out the answer for you all. So it is absolutely correct. 89%. The audience, the participants, quite intelligent. And congratulations. This is the leaderboard, the top 10 scorers. So once again, I wish... Congratulations to all the quiz competition winners. The result is in front of you. This is all the top 10 scorers in front of us. So congratulations to all these 10 top scorers. You will be getting your quiz completion certificate soon. All the best. Stay tuned. Now, 
lovely audience. We'll take you to some brainstorming sessions that is a question and answer session. If you have any question for our speakers, then quickly write it down along with your name, country, and the question directed to the respective speaker in the chat box. We will read it out, and the luminaries for today's session will be answering all your questions. So over to question answer round. So, oh, welcome back, Ma'am Rubin and Dr. David Paris. Can I uh, request you to come on the screen? Now, let's find out the best combo of our great guest speakers <laughs> for the question answer round. We are expecting some good questions. So, this is question number one from Roro Roro. What to do if the academic staff disregards the ethical standards putting teachers in a very confusing situation? So, any one of you can answer this question. Doc Wilma, would you want me to go ahead and answer? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mom. All right. Um, whatever the circumstance may be, whoever is involved, teachers are supposed to adhere to their moral standards, right? Um, if in case the academic staff disregards this, on the first place, basically the administrators are the ones who came up with some sort of rules to guide us rules that we are supposed to follow. Um, if in case we would not be abiding by this, the administrators in a way are basically, or even the academic staff, would basically be defying the very purpose as to why um, the code of ethics or the rules are actually set in the first place. There would be chaos, I believe. All right. Now, I know it's hard to follow certain rules, all right? but we are not just talking about rules in relation to the university. But over and above that, we are talking about ethical standards, which is supposed to be upheld by any teacher, whatever the circumstance. As mentioned by Dr. Uh, uh, um, Wilma a while ago, we serve as role models. If in case you're in a very difficult situation, in ethics, we basically refer to that as a moral dilemma. All right. Once you're situated in a moral dilemma, there are many options to choose from. And the moment you prolong the agony of you trying to pick the best choice, eventually you would end up probably not taking the best choice at all, right? So weigh the consequences all the time. If what is at stake is your own dignity, integrity, your own ethical or moral standards, then you are supposed to decide on something. I believe the best way for you to do that is to actually tell supervisors, the dean, probably um, the head of, let's say, the guidance office, whoever is involved, in, in relation in, in in issues related to this so they would know basically what goes on on that particular level that's my take on that thank you very much absolutely <laughs> correct ma'am you have given justice to this question and can i have the next question on the screen please How to reflect ethics in teachers' teaching now that we are in pandemic? Uh, please cite an example. This question has been asked from his heart. So any one of you can please give the reply. Yeah. You go ahead first, Mom. I'll All right. Um, later. Now, more than ever, we are supposed to show compassion to our students. At times, you'd probably say, what goes on at the other end of the screen? During an online session, a student would probably say, I would be offline, I was disconnected for internet problems, probably a gadget failure, 
power interruption? On, on our end, you'd probably say, when am I supposed to believe all this alibis or excuses to be true? Right? But then again, this is basically the situation we're in. Right? Give them the benefit of the doubt. I know at times you'd probably say, up to how much am I supposed to extend my patience, my understanding to my students? But then again, that's basically what we are made for. We are designed to be not just a teacher, but a mother. Let me share this personally. This is how I, I, I view, this is what my mantra is in terms of teaching. I treat my students as if they are my own. I want them to be taught, to be cared for, the same way I want my own kids to be taught and to be cared for in school. Right? I, I wish that the same love, care, understanding, empathy, and not just sympathy, be given to these particular students, especially in this pandemic. So basically, the example I mentioned would be the example about them having excuses. I can't attend our synchronous classes. I can't attend our online discussions. All because there are basically many factors to consider. They may be true. You have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Trust them. Because the moment they, they see that despite all these, all these alibis, even if they happen to be just made up excuses, eventually they would see that if you reach out to them just the same, they would basically change their way. It's some sort of like telling us, uh, telling the teachers, kill them with your kindness. Do not kill them with revenge. <laughs> that way they'd be able to realize my teacher is worth going to, attending to, even in a very difficult situation like the pandemic. That's my take on that. Thank you very much. Okay. Can that I add? the best answer. Yes, ma'am, please. You can uh, add okay. to this uh, question. Yeah. As what ma'am Rubet said a while back, no? I agree with what he, she said. And during this pandemic uh, time, we know for a fact that we are very uncertain of the <laughs> things that will happen to us in the future. So as a teacher, we need to have that empathy, empathy to our students, meaning we need to put ourselves in, the, in their shoes to be able for them to feel them. Okay, as a mother of four, no, I, I, I played a role of a mother to my students most of the time, if not all of the time, because there are certain controls in some situations, ma'am. No? And we, during this time, ethics is very much reflective to, the, to us as to us teachers, educators, for us to give more patience to our <laughs> students in terms of understanding them. Okay, uh, like uh, there are dilemmas behind our mode of teaching because we don't have face-to-face -face contact with them. Sometimes poor connectivity of internet arises and then some students cannot cope up with the lessons we wanted to uh, have their outputs just, for example, in, in, a, in a short span of time. But we need to give them more time to do it for them to be able to cope up. So we also have to be, what we call this, um, have the purity of heart. When we have the purity of heart as a teacher, we we have that broad mind, not a narrow-minded teacher, narrow-minded mom, so that our students will be able to, to discuss with us what they 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 want what they do not want what they are into and everything for that matter we have that symbiosis relationship a mother and a daughter and a son to his or her daughter and sons thank you mom that's my take on this question I think uh, Hazel would be lucky that she has given, I mean, got the answer by the two great guest speakers. So now this question is to Dr. Wilma. How to yes. help students who are not motivated, confused, and depressed during the pandemic? Yes, this is a very yes, yes. Okay, this is a very nice question, Mom. I know. Okay. <laughs> How to help students who are not motivated, confused, and depressed during this pandemic? Of course, not few students have this uh, problem during this time. And um, we know for a fact that many students lost uh, interest in their studies 
they are they do not like to cooperate anymore uh, they are confused and depressed and don't know what to do they want to go out but they can't they cannot focus on their studies they cannot do the normal thing they do before the pandemic and so what we need to do to them is to continuously motivate them until such time they will have that positivity in their in their learnings and as a mother and as a teacher as well as a friend we need to be uh, playing the role of this uh, <laughs> being a mother being a friend being a teacher being uh, confidante to be able for them to be motivated and go back to learning go back to their uh, to focusing with their studies and uh, uh, maybe the 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 first and foremost thing that i could uh, uh, help my students is to teach them how to pray how to believe and trust in god and surrender everything to god because in his perfect time this pandemic will end i believe and they should not be losing hope that's it ma'am absolutely i am blessed i am blessed that you are so positive <laughs> you are so helpful you know and you're thinking good for the society now for ma'am rubet one in four teachers are considering wow. quitting after this past year if teachers are passionate about teaching why do good teachers quit what happens if teachers quit quite an emotional question i believe yes yes oh, yeah, I yeah, believe. yeah yeah it's By coming from a, probably an experience it saddened yeah. me to see this this if it, in case it's a result of a research then probably I, I i'm disheartened right now because of this particular statistics one in four teachers are considering quit, quitting after this past year if in case it's true and if teachers are passionate about teaching why do good teachers quit many factors to consider we probably the most practical i could think of would be we have to accept the fact that at least in the case of Philipp teachers from the philippines we cannot really say that we receive very good pay right um if you're a mother probably trying to give the best quote unquote future for your children you'd probably think of other ways on how to earn more money right i believe that the passion is still there but you're probably considering giving more emphasis, more, more time to providing well for the kids, all right? Um, if in case this past years, many teachers are quitting, uh, that's basically one reason. I believe it's economic first and foremost. Secondly, maybe it's because we do not get enough support, all right? Um, add to that the very, re uh, the very uh, hardships teachers usually encounter during the pandemic. You have to have a laptop. You have to have very good internet connection. You have to prepare well. You have to be some sort of an entertainer so that the students would keep coming back to your... You, you pretend as if every class, every synchronous class is like a webinar. So they would want to come to you and see you, all right? But then again, if in case the passion is gone, I believe you are a teacher first and foremost. You are a teacher at the end of the day, just the same. In, in, in many ways... You'd be able to see ways on how to be a teacher to others, even if you're not in the teaching profession. Probably if you're in the corporate world, just the same, that teacher in, in you would come out, all right? But this saddens me, all right? What happens if teachers would quit? Well, then I believe there would be lesser engineers, architects, teachers, future teachers who'd be able to mold the lives of other students uh, because all these professions basically come from the very hands, the very mind, and the very heart of a teacher, molding all of these uh, people together so that we build the community in general, all right? It saddens me to see this particular question, but at times, you know, you have to prioritize things, not because you're losing the passion, not because you're not good at teaching, but at times you have to prioritize things, and that's the reality we have to face. Thank you. Nice thought indeed. Yeah. Uh, good evening from Pamela and Elengesa. Every profession has its own code of ethics and ethical standards, and they have to follow such. But why there are leaders who are superior enough to control employees or subordinate in the way he or she wanted, 
is it still a moral very intelligent question i must yes. appreciate pamela yes. for this question which you have brought now any one of you can please answer this question of pamela here's the answer doc wilma okay uh nice question pamela alingasa all right yeah that's I, I i agree that every profession has its own code of ethics and ethical standards as they have to follow such otherwise we will be topsy-turvy and we don't have rules and regulations to follow we don't have goal no so um i mean but why there are leaders who are superior enough to control employees or subordinate in the way he or she wants it is this a moral? Uh, I believe that what is legal is not always moral. Okay, we we need to understand that what is I repeat what is legal is not always moral. Some people it, it depends on on our leaders, like our leaders in the government, our our school administrators, to name a few. Okay, name it. We have all the leaders in the world. And it's in the in it's innate in their own character and personality how to deal with their employees. They have the control because they they believe that is something that is very unjust and unfair to the employees. No, since you are the employer, you need to listen to your employees. Okay, you need not to be imposing rules and reg reg rules and regulations most of the time. A good leader, I believe is a good listener when you listen you have the ears you have the heart okay that says everything and if you have if you are a god-fearing person you need to always consider the, the uh, other people that's love no love is always considering what is good for the other person okay love is always giving and dictating yourself for the good and betterment of other people okay the least you could consider is yourself that's a good employer that's a good leader that's a good uh um higher position uh that's a good manager should possess okay i think uh now that we need to always consider the fact that not all legal is always moral that's it. I agree a hundred percent. You bet. You, you, you but, want to. But add most things, but mm -hmm. most things which are ethical and moral are most of the time actually legal. So if yeah. you try to weigh things which are legal and moral, the, the weight and and the responsibility for you to enact and force a moral or ethical decision is actually heavier. It's a heavy burden, yes. all right. But yeah. more than it seeing as a burden or an obligation, it's a responsibility. Uh, my, my point of view, in, in terms of um, seeing a leader as someone who's truly a leader, Pamela, one who has moral ascendancy, right? Someone who, who decides on certain matters, not because they see themselves as superior, not because they see themselves as bosses or supervisors, because basically if that is the, uh, the, the mindset, the paradigm of a particular leader, they merely, uh, they're, they're merely in a position for the sake of being at the position, but there's supposed to be some sort of a moral ascendancy. If you'd ask me, is it moral? The answer is no. More than anybody else, basically the leaders, the supervisors, the president of a university, let's say, the president of a country, first and foremost, they are supposed to show some sort of a moral um, maturity. All right? So um, just to add, let, let, us, let us be just a little bit technical here. The reason why there's such a thing as a code of ethics for specific professions, it's basically just an added division to ethics. That's basically because the, the community, our society has become so complex such that there is supposed to be a specific code for every, for every profession. In time, it developed, meaning every profession, you could be a doctor, you could be an accountant, right? You could be a teacher and follow a specific set of code uh, for, for that particular profession. But all in all, when you refer to ethics in general, to morality in general, what are the basis? It's basically freedom of the human person, reason or rationality along with your impartiality. It might appear as if it's too objective, but in reality, our emotions actually 
uh, get in the way of us uh, deciding on certain things. My point, it's not moral. It's because more than anybody else, they're supposed to have some sort of a moral ascendancy. Well, this was an intelligent answer. Now, we have this question from Poonam. What are the effective ways to measure ethics and learning? Very now, this good. question is addressed to both the speakers because Puna wanted the answers from both the great yes, speakers. Yes, very good question. Allow me to, to, yes, okay. What are the effective ways to measure ethics in learning? You're probably asking, how am I able to see as a teacher how ethics is being developed, being ethically matured? How is it developed in my students? It's as, it's as simple as them handing over to me a research work, an output, probably a submitted work that is not copied from anything else, from something else. This modality that we have right now, the online setup we have right now, made cheating, copying, and pasting very rampant. All right? So making them understand that um, it's not about the grades all the time. The, their grades, they do not, it does not in any way define them as a person. It does not in any way define them as a student. If the be-all and end-all for them is to get high grades all the time, then probably their vision about education is very shallow, right? It's because what really is supposed to be harnessed while you are a student, make them realize that, is that other than learning the subject, other than being expert, competent at their courses, they have to develop some sort of morality, all right? It, at the Holy Angel University, we try to imbibe in them the three Cs. Conscience, competence, compassion. When you refer to competence, basically just the head level. It's taught in your professional subjects, how to be a good engineer, how to be a competent architect. Skills, head level. Therefore, it points towards things which, which pertain to I know and I think. It's objective. right? It can be learned anywhere. But when you refer to this, the affective side, the emotion, maturity, ethical responsibility, that's basically where this other dimension of the human person sets in, right? Meaning you're capable of um, building a holistic graduate, a holistic student in the end. How do I measure ethics in, in, their, in their learning? In the very simple things that you do every day. Being on time in class, because that's respecting the time of their teacher, respecting the time of their fellow classmates as well. Right, handing over submitted works on time. That for me is simple, but basically um, very important in significant ways to teach what ethics is while they are learning as students. That's my take on that, Puna. Thank you very much. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. So now Nelboy Camino asks, let us stay. There is that dean from our university that is so closed minded and always jumping decisions from time to time. What if she's not able to handle her emotions, though? Right. Any one of you can uh, answer this okay. question of Camino. Okay. All right, uh, I'll take this one. No? Okay, and then Mom Robert can add later on. Okay, this happened, no? This is happening in universities <laughs> in the Philippines. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let's be uh, honest to admit, no? Okay, yes, uh, the very scenario honest, very is honest. you're true. <laughs> uh, the, the dean from our university, maybe he's feeling this. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he is a victim. I, I, I do believe, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> from our university that is so close-minded, this is not good, no? As a dean, you need not to be a close-minded person. Always jumping decisions from time to time, not good. As I uh, uh, told you a while back, to be ethical means to listen, not always to, to talk and talk and talk. And uh, you you need to be listening to your subordinates. It's it's something like um, entitlement. That's the exact word, no? You are the dean. You are entitled of so many things. You are entitled because you have the position. You are in power. So you you, you are you are so boastful and braggart about being a dean because you are entitled of so many things. So it's not good. You need to be. To have an open mind uh, and you need not to jump into a conclusion immediately. You need to listen to both 
for example, there are two teachers who fought, who, ha who has a misunderstanding. You need to listen to, to both of them. Do not cite anything. You need to weigh things. And then from there, you you set uh, what they call Because if you have a set of goals, decision-making is uh, decision making becomes easier okay so we should not be capable of handling our emotions very tough no we should be controlling ourselves that's ethical manners okay character personality because as a unique individual i believe each and every one of us has our own unique character personality that some or many of us especially those who are in position have no control in their emotions they they say what they like to say they do what they want to decide without considering the feelings of others okay the word is empathy okay another word because excuse me because you need to be putting your shoes always in the shoes of other person that's my take mom maybe you want to add mom robert i i could imagine if in case this is a real situation for mr camino I could imagine the torture you have to go through every time you go to the university. <laughs> because one rule that was mentioned in a memo probably the other day would probably change tomorrow or this particular day. All right. Now, um, practical in a practical sense, there is always someone who is higher than the dean, probably the administrators, vice president for academic affairs, the president of the university. I believe it, it um, entails a lot of very good communication avenues for you to be able to air out these sentiments that you're feeling. If in case it does not work for you, uh, for you to be productive at teaching, for you to be a productive employee, all because you fear that this particular clo close-minded uh, dean from the university might change his uh, decisions every now and then, you might as well uh, clear it out in the open. Tell him what goes on especially if it's already affecting your job, your profession. If in case it doesn't work out on that level, might as well elevate it to the higher-ups, to okay. probably persons who are uh, probably higher in terms of position than the dean, all right? Because there is no other way for you to be able to get over this particular horrible situation, not unless you air out your grievances and argument, okay? Communicate. That's all I could say. This question was dealt very nicely by both of you. Now, by uh, Sheila, the question is, what are the possible interventions if teachers are not practicing ethical teaching? <laughs> yeah. okay. I believe it's a no-no from the very beginning. Oh. What interventions? <laughs> Probably reprimand them, talk to them. Yeah. If I'm the dean and I see that my subordinates, my teachers do not perform well, it's because their their teaching profession is hampered by their their own ethical or moral standards i i would have to to call on their attention reprimand them if in case it doesn't work probably hit the advice of someone who is an expert in the field maybe uh michael davis actually set out seven steps on how you could possibly uh, um, um, come up with an ethical or moral decision the first thing that you're supposed to do is to assess what basically is the problem if there are side issues, probably personal things going on in the life of this particular teacher, be more empathetic. Probably listen to their side. Because at times, the reason why our, our work is affected, it's because at the back of our heads, we are thinking about a lot of things, personal stuff probably. And it's affecting our professional ethics, our teaching in the long run. All right. All uh right. I, I will add a few words, okay? Because we know for a fact that uh, being a teacher is very difficult. It's a difficult profession, no? It requires that individuals be more exemplars in the world, inside and outside the classroom. So uh, it's a no-no also for me because uh, the teacher should be practicing 24-7 uh, ethical <laughs> teaching, okay? inside be he or she inside and outside the classroom because to act or behave in a particular or in a controlled manner should be always uh should be possessed by a teacher always okay so 
Mm, I think, I believe he is not a real teacher He if he is not practicing ethical teaching. Maybe the oath of teaching did not sink in into his heart <laughs> and mind when he became a teacher or a professor. That's it. Because we put, we need to put into practice what we what we uh, do, what we act, what we uh, uh, what we convey, what we uh, talk. Okay, what we want to. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I agree with both of you. <laughs> I'm reminded. I'm reminded of a personal code yeah. I have. Um, I, I I I practiced ever since I became a teacher. I never wore shorts. I no longer wear. <laughs> That's against the dignity of a teacher, so actually. Much, yes. It is as I if we are prohibited, people. yeah? No <laughs> one actually tells you to do that, but it is as if you feel that you're supposed to do it. You owe yeah. it to your students. You, you, you assume that anytime they would see you probably in the market, in the grocery, in the supermarket, you have to look because your of best course, all the of time. course, a teacher is an inspiration towards exactly, the children, yeah. and they look Example, forward to it. Yeah, a role model. It's like yes. it's like you saying to him, much is given, much is expected in return. Yeah, and much is yeah. given to us. Th yeah. Therefore, yeah. much is yeah. expected from us as well. Yeah, correct, exactly, okay. ma'am. I, I respect your thoughts. <laughs> I really respect the thoughts. Yes, correct. Uh, let's look forward for any more question. Yes, this is for both the uh, speakers. What ethical issues do you experience as teachers? How do you manage them? So this right. is your personal your personal experience and example. Uh, Rachel, Molentia, Kadis want to know. Okay. Um, should I first, ma'am? Okay. Yeah, when no, I was no, no, no. In, sure. yes, ma'am. Uh, I remember one of my students when I was uh, a foreign language teacher at Dubai United Arab Emirates. That's way back 2005. Okay, uh, I was uh, I was called by one of the students in that school, Sharjah British School. Come here, come here. He told me like that. Nani, nani, come here. He called me by name, and then uh, he even whisper. Come here. It is as if oh. I am a dog. Yeah. So very disrespectful gesture of a grade nine student, if I'm okay. not mistaken, because uh, he he thought that I am a nanny because the Filipino nannies are are tasked to to assist the, the students, take care, uh, 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 accompany them in the bus, school bus, and then do all the chores, cleaning the toilets, etc., okay. and uh, doing assisting the teachers. So he doesn't know that I am a teacher, and oh, wow. it, it really exasperated me when he continuously called me like that, no, without with, disrespectful. And then okay. how I manage it, I I uh, told him in a nice way. I told him. Uh, can you please look, tone down your voice? I'm a okay. teacher here. I'm I, I'm not a nanny. I told him, no, no, you are a nanny. He kept on he kept on insisting that I am a nanny. So let's go to the principal's office. I told him, come, come with me. Let's go to the principal's office, and I will. Uh, uh, the principal will introduce me to you. Yeah, I'm a Filipina. You know the discrimination, ma'am. No, uh, oh. uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because they yes. look at us very low. It is as if we are the fourth class citizen in their country because they believe that they, they own their country. We are just a, a, a poor fellow who migrated in their country to earn a living to be able for us to send to our families here in the Philippines like that. So uh, to cut the story short, we went to the, the principal's office and the principal got mad at the boy and he the principal told the boy, he is an Arab, an Emirati. Of course, they are okay. well of family. They, 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 they think they are the king of their country. Yes. So they are so uh, disrespectful and all. They can tell whatever words they want to tell. But the but the principal sided me. He said uh, to him, uh, "Make an apology to the teacher. He, she is a teacher here. She is." Uh, uh, an English teacher, a foreign language teacher, and she comes from the Philippines. She is different from the other Filipina. She is an educated person, and she's not a nanny. Say sorry to her. 
That's what the principal told her. And then he is very apologetic, uh, saying, I'm very sorry, mom. I thought you are a nanny. Forgive me. I'll not do that again. So I did not shout at him, Did or, nor did I uh, um, told him uh, bad words and all, but I calm myself to bring the matter to the principal, to the higher authorities. Be because I'm also afraid because that's not my country. They could easily yes. <laughs> deport me if I, if I do something wrong. So uh, that's, I remember with this question, no? Ethical no, issue. but I must appreciate, you know, your courage, your honesty, rather, that you have narrated such a personal incident to us, yes. you know, I'm touched, I'm really touched, because see, I'm a regular at IGP, I often meet all the guest speakers, eminent guest speakers from Philippines, and I really appreciate, you know, all the guest speakers from Philippines are wonderful. So, you know, one odd can be, one odd incident can be, you know, it can happen with anyone, with any one of us, actually. But it's great. It's great to listen from you. Yes, okay. Uh, and Ma'am Rubeth, do you want to speak anything related oh, to this? Okay, okay. Right, if you go back to what top of mind, what I thought of when I saw the question a while ago is that sense of ownership. All right. Okay. At times it's forgotten by most of your colleagues. It's as if they do not give credit where credit is due. Example, if in case you thought of a particular, let's say, part of the module, a part of a book, um, your contribution to something, it's as if somebody else would get the idea and claim it as theirs. All right? I find that very unethical, very okay. unbecoming of a, of a pr 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 professor, a teacher. All right? How do I manage yeah. it? Basically, um, a... a there are certain instances where in your hours you can allow it to slip. It's okay. Things like that. But you would come to a point where you'd probably say, I have to do something about it. And as, men, as I've been mentioning a while ago, head on, you have, you have, to, um, you have to arrest the problem. Talk yes, to the person. Yes, yes, yes. A good, very good communication process, talking to the person would be very helpful, very healthy. It's because at times they are probably unaware that you're offended at what they did. And the moment that you air out your grudges, your grievances against it, that's when they would realize, I never thought all along that I've been offending you already. Right? Yes. And that's basically when the yes. magic begins. All right? <laughs> and, 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 great, a, great. A magical relationship. And, uh, for all you know, this person whom you uh, you hated so much, it, it would turn out to be your, your best buddy in the, in, the, in, in the lounge, in the faculty lounge. Great, great. I I just resonate with you, Ma'am Rubeth, for this wonderful answer, you know, for wonderful insight that you have given to this. And now this is, I guess, the last question for Ma'am Paris. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty returning to in-person instruction. Teachers will likely be encouraged or required to wear masks. Can teachers really do their job in masks? Okay, very nice question then, from yeah, Mama yeah, Manalika White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teachers yeah. want us to speak, 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 yeah. speak. And then we yeah. are yeah. covering our mouth with a mask. Then how do we? Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, true. With mask, actually. Yes, ma'am. With mask or without mask, you can deliver your your <laughs> teaching, no? your lessons, per se. Because during this pandemic times, of course, for, for safety precaution, we are... We are to wear mask and uh, face mask and face shield uh, to protect our bodies from catching the virus. All right, but uh, for us teachers, honestly, I felt like I wasn't able to. I am not able to give my best because they cannot see my mouth, my gestures, my my deliberation of my words because of the mask that is protecting and uh, me from catching the virus. But I can, I can deliver my lesson even I had mask, I, even I wear mask, no? And um, uh, it's a matter of how you know your lessons, your subject matter, how you are prepared to eat. It's very important that you know how to uh, uh, how to impart your knowledge to your students with or without mask. 
preferably without mask, no? I suppose because this uh, <laughs> pandemic really hinders us from communicating well to our students. And maybe, uh, you know, for a fact that all students uh, scrutinize us from head to foot, from our from our head down to our toes, what is the color of the lipstick of Mamparas, the, the eyeglasses, the hairpins, the dress, the shoes, etc. So in this case, during this pandemic, they won't be able to see us personally, but through online classes. Uh, and I I felt so, uh, I, I've been missing my students, interacting with them personally. It's It's really hard to to be teaching nowadays because we cannot deliver 100% our best 100% because of the many dilemmas the constraint the poor connectivity of internet and a lot I of respect your perspective Dr. Parrish but <laughs> yes, great yeah yeah but with or without mask a teacher is a, is a teacher still no because yes, yes. Um, Absolutely correct. Yeah, uh, you need to be on call twenty four seven. Even you are sleeping when a teacher needs your assistance or help. Maybe he doesn't understand the direction. You need to answer him or her. Even you felt so okay. asleep, and even you are in the comfort room. Even with even you are, it is as if you have no. You know, ma'am, it's very hard to really become a teacher, to be a teacher. I know, you, I know, I know. On call, you are, you are uh, uh, not allowed to do this and that, just like what Mom Robert said a while back. Perfect. You need to be presentable. See, uh, being an educator, I can connect yeah. with you, you know. I can uh, yes, connect you. whatever, <laughs> even Ma'am Robert spoke, whatever Dr. Paras yeah. is, have spoken, you know. And indeed, it was one of the best power pet question answer round. I love your energy. I love your warmth. <laughs> and especially Thank the you, honesty. Thank you very but much. What honesty you responded to all the queries of our participants. It was lovely. Even I enjoyed, you know. I resonated Thank with the perspectives of you, whatever you spoke. The questions, no doubt, were also lovely, but the answers given by both of you were perfect. So thank you so much for coming on our platform, for gracing the platform, IGP, and be a part of this. And I think very soon, we will be going to meet in next upcoming webinars also. So I wish you all the best. Stay blessed forever. Keep smiling and keep shining. I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise, thank, you Likewise, yeah. thank you, Dr. Shelley. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Nice meeting you, ma'am, Dr. Shelley. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great, great connect indeed. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. We really, we really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. So, lovely audience, I believe you also enjoyed the lovely quiz round and the lovely question answer session. So, I think it is the time for the few announcements which we have to make regarding the certificates and all. So, this is the first announcement which I will be making that from 1st August, we have a free international webinar and that is on a daily basis. But the time is fixed and that is 6 p.m. BST. So those who are new, please note it down that this international webinar will be coming free of cost on a daily basis at 6 p.m. BST. And now you will even have a double bonus from September. We will arrange free international webinars on weekend. That is Sunday, but the morning session. 9.30 a.m. BST. It will be a three-hour morning session. So those who don't have the time in the evening because of certain commitments can join us in the morning weekends. That is Sunday. We will be meeting you sharp at 9.30 a.m. BST. So all the best. This is a double bonus given by IGP. So certificate code must from July 12, 2021, which are available on the video session certification part. Without certificate code, no one is eligible to get their certificate. It is compulsory, it is mandatory. Video will be available always on the Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel. Now, those who want to learn, anyone can join us on live sessions or later on. They can even watch the recorded sessions of IGP. We don't have any restrictions for learning. Our focus 
is only that learn anything, whatever you want, but learning is must. It should not be stopped as I narrated in my introduction speech. The beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you as quoted by B.B. King. So I guess you all will be following it, all the knowledge seekers rather. And coming soon, wow, this is the best part. Even I'm also looking forward for uh, the first time that IGP is launching a virtual award ceremony program. So I think as I am eager, my all participants and the attendees will be eager to watch the virtual award ceremony of IGP. Let me find out, you know, I don't know when the date is there, but yes, it's coming soon for all of us. And also, this is also a new venture coming soon. IGP will be publishing their Android apps within a few days. You can do everything from that app also. This is also a very good news. So IGP is throwing surprises, you know, <laughs> all surprises. All these are bounces. All good surprises are coming. And that too in small, small packages. Very soon we will be revealing all these things to you. Okay, now this is another surprise. Very soon, we will launch quiz competition tab on our website with certificates for all. Anyone can join at any time. This is also a surprise package given by IGP. Great, congratulations. All these are coming soon news. Great, great to connect on IGP. So, from 7th, 8th, you will get class material in every webinar description box on our website, even on the YouTube program link and the webinar material. Can you see the arrow which is shown over here? Okay, for speaker one, speaker two, speaker three. So you just click over there, you will get the material of speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, whatever you click. So this is also something very good for all the knowledge seekers and learners suppose in case if you want certain presentation certain slides something it will really help you out it's a very good initiative done by igp i really congratulate them very nice for all the educators even all the learners and scholars good good to see now again are you interested in one year international diploma program certificate for free if yes then you need to go through it Please go through the website to check the details. This is also something good because then IGP will be giving you free international diploma in professional development and management, which is something good. You can even find the submission link on the description. And this is again one happy announcement, which is an offer from IGP on the occasion of the anniversary of IGP. This is for all our participants for an international diploma certificate. Every government has some rules like you have to must learn 250 hours. That's why we decided to collect our certificates from you, which can ensure that you are capable of international diploma certificate we know that our all programs are now three hours but for a judgment we will calculate a program on average of two hours that is uh, 130 certificates you have to submit 260 hours hours that matter you are auto applicable for igp international diploma certificate so hurry up this is a good news you know igp is giving all the good news all the happy announcements today for all the attendees all the participants so grab up the opportunity hurry up this is something good for all of you for all the knowledge seekers all the scholars all the learners all the certificate links are now available on our facebook pinch post or top post i don't think there is any problem for you all to you know downloading all the certificates Everything is available in the website, in the Facebook, or in the top post. You can just can go over there, just see, and you will get all the details. What you have to do, collect all the certificates from the website from 15th August 2020. 
to 10th August 2021. That is one complete academic year. Submit all the certificates into the given link with your full name, profession, designation, and country. But the last date of submission is 20th August 2021. And today it is 16th August. So four more days to go. So hurry up, hurry up, guys, if you not have done. If you haven't done it, please, you have four days to go. Quickly submit all the certificates if you want to have that uh, certificate program. Now, this is the submission link. Please look at the screen, jot it down. Link is available in the comment box also. Now, this is the good news. IGP has already received 29,000 plus messages in the last six days. We started reply everyone from 16th August. Okay, so only four days are left. So hurry up. Don't miss this golden opportunity. It's such a good initiative taken by IGP. So I want each one of you to kindly, you know, grab the offer, take an opportunity. And it is something very good for your career, for your career growth. Uh, to make this remarkable, we need your support to build a powerful IGP learning community. Invite your all friends in this page and group that we can serve more and more people with free education. Can you see the Facebook page? Now we have 55,000 followers and the target is 1 lakh plus. Facebook group also, we have 34,000 members and the target is 1 lakh. So I request each one of you to kindly nominate, support at least five of your friends to attend this webinar, to get connected with all of us because we have already celebrated the anniversary and we want us to grow and surpass one lakh both in the facebook page as well as the facebook group community so all the best try to recommend igp and spread a word spread a positive word with all your friends and all your network and all your you know uh, all all connections actually because it's a lovely platform and if we, we are enjoying and if we, we are getting the knowledge then why not others also so let's meet the target all the best to all of you are you looking for an opportunity to work with IGP internationally? Wow, this sounds great. Absolutely great. Why not? I think everyone is keen for this answer. And I guess the answer is yes. Everyone will be eager to work with IGP and that too on an international platform. If you feel confident to work with IGP as an international organizing committee board member, you are welcome. This is the grand news, I think, revealed by IGP. And I think everyone who has the potential, who has the talent, and who wants to be associated with IGP as an international organizing committee board member, kindly send your profiles to IGP, I'm telling you. And you will be benefited and it will, I mean, your life will turn if you actually start working with IGP. It's a great platform and uh, I appreciate the great initiative which uh, IGP has taken. So come ahead and board this platform with your profiles. Coming soon, there is some Institute of Global Professionals WhatsApp business account. I think IGP is making great progress coming out with Bonanza, you know, surprises. There are so many surprises. Even I'm looking forward to find out all these things. It's something so exciting. Now, next, if you want to support us kindly, can you see that red arrow there? Support us, you know, kindly click it. Check the website website of Institute of Global Professionals, www.eduigp.com and support us with all the positive reviews. Whatever you have learned in the session, previous session, today's sessions, upcoming sessions and all everything. So if we get the positive reviews, of course, IGP will skyrocket with your support.
So I think this is the certification process, which will go side by side. Uh, 16th August today's program was Ethics and Teaching, which we have already done. It was a wonderful webinar, wonderful topic, wonderful presenters, wonderful guest speakers from Philippines. You just need to click here for today's certificate. This is the certification link which you can see on the screen. Just click on this. It is available in the comment box and pinned comment. Certification link will be available always in this program. Post like Facebook page, Facebook group, YouTube description. Can I see the step three? Okay. Uh, this is something very important which you have to listen to me. You have you can claim your certificate in two ways. The first way is the direct link from the comment box, pinned comment, or the post description. And second thing, in case if you're not able to click this link, please directly browse www.eduitp.com for all information together. So you will find today's program, and then the process is same, which I have already explained to you. So you can go by any two processes either process one or two. Now, this is your step three. Browse www.eduit.com or given link. You will rewrite it in this page of our website. Can you see that? blue rectangular box which is given on the right hand side click enroll now the moment you click you will automatically get enrolled over there now if you are new you need to create your account if you have an account then log in directly after that find the seminar title and get enrolled can you find that green rectangular box on the right just click in if you all are new to this platform and if you are, are uh, old ones, then it is not an issue at all. You already know what to do. Okay, step four, the instruction. Now, this is something important, you know. For ethics in teaching, the code is IGP1234. And please don't get confused with the code which I told you for the quiz. For quiz, the code was something else. And for the certificate, for today's session, Ethics in Teaching, the code is IGP1234, and it is very, very important. Unless and until you don't fill the code, you will not get the certificate. Step five. Okay. Now, uh, find the rectangular blue box on your right hand side. You click it where it is written, get your certificate. The moment you click this, you need to enter this code IGP1234. As soon as you enter your code first, your certification code IGP1234, and click on get your certificate. So, automatically the certificate will be downloaded. So, please remember today's code IGP1234. Step six. Okay, our free international webinar certificate is also downloadable, auto downloadable in PDF file. Please check your device file manager. Sometimes it looks uncompleted, which is for your mobile screen size. In PDF file, everything will be okay. If nothing is found in your file manager, please check your browser setting or upgrade your browser or try with another browser or try it from a laptop or desktop. It is nothing. You know, sometimes the technical glitches are there, but it will be handled very nicely. Now, this is your certificate, which is ready. And please note the step seven. This is your verified certificate. You know, all your certificates are verified. This is something very good.
So you can join our all live programs from the Facebook page, face group, YouTube channel and website. And if anyone missed any program due to some unavoidable reasons because of certain glitches, it, it happens. It happens in today's world. Still, you can attend previous webinar with all verified certificates. So this is a good news. And dear participants, in case if any problem is there, you can, you know, claim your certificate or any other issues. Please don't try. Don't be hesitant, you know, to contact us if now website isn't working. OK, so don't be panic at all. You know, it can be the issue of the traffic cause maybe of maximum user. Now, right now we have 600 plus user who are looking for certificates. So with code, you can claim your certificate anytime. No problem at all. Our core team members are always ready. You just need to write your comments no, in the comment section. Hello, ma'am. Sorry for interrupting. Am I audible? Am I audible? Uh, yes, Mr. Kaushik, do you want to speak something? Yeah, am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible. Yeah, ma'am, right now, uh, the participants is around... Twelve hundred. Oh, 1200. 1200 because I got it's the information around, last day. It was 600, but it's great to it's great to listen that it's more than 1200. Wow, is, that means yeah, this was an amazing session with a good. That's the reason because I saw that uh, our website is can afford uh, at least 500, but now it's around eight, uh, 1200. So it's too much defeats. Uh, too much difficult to identify everyone and too much difficult to serve everyone at the same time so uh, which is very essential or important that is code with code anyone can claim their certificate anytime okay you so this is what contact. audience i told you that you need to claim your certificate only with your code so please remember the code of today's session for claiming your certificates it's more than 1200 participants we had today for the session So this I have already told you, uh, this is about the core team members who are always ready in comment section to support you to find the solution. Now for every page, we have Janet as Cabello, Cheris Cabiros, and Cherilyn Yamki. For YouTube channel, we have Calvin Lilator, Goel Denog, and for every group, we have Jonas Malingen and Warren Alonso. So you can very well connect with this team customer service representative for all these three different sections. And I assure you that these guys will be definitely reverting back to your queries. So this is the next upcoming webinar on August 17, Leading for Success, by the great eminent speakers from South Africa, Ecuador, and OK, that's good. That's good. I got one message. I got my certificate for tonight. Thank you, Sir Kaushik, Dr. Shelley, insightful speakers, and IGP family. Wow, this is so great. This is so great to get the comment from one of the energetic participants of today's session. Congratulations to you. And I wish all congratulations to the other participants also. Very soon, you all be getting your certificates. So for August 18, the seminar is on facts and figures of ancient mathematical techniques from the great speakers from Oman in India. OK, so the participants are sending the messages. They are getting the certificates. Good to see. OK, August 19, we have the upcoming session of community engagement and empowerment from the three great speakers from Nigeria, India, and Vietnam. Good. August 20, it is concepts and components of quantitative research from the great speakers from Philippines. August 21, it's achieving success through innovation by the three guest speakers from Croatia, South Africa, and United Arab Emirates.
August 22, it is Communication and Leadership in the Workplace by the two guest speakers from Philippines. Next, we have the session on August 23. It is on leadership in education by the three speakers from Croatia, Switzerland, and South Africa. Please block your dates for all this upcoming session. Register yourself. August 24, we have intervention strategies for distance learning from the speakers from Philippines. August 25, it is social emotional teaching and learning management from speakers from Greece, India, and Georgia. Self empowerment for young professionals is coming on August 26 from the speakers from Philippines. August 27, Thriving for Success. Speakers are from South Africa, India, Nigeria, and Singapore. Please block your dates. Uh, August 28, Significant and Dynamic Trends in Education by speakers from Thailand on August 28. Okay, August 29, Principles of Leading Change from the four speakers from South Africa, United Kingdom, and the two speakers are also from South Africa. August 30, Meeting the Challenges of the New Normal in School Education by the two great speakers of Philippines. Great. And August 31, August 31, we have Young Leaders Changing the World by the four great speakers from South Africa, United Kingdom, Vietnam, and again, South Africa. September 1. This is very important, you know, once again, I'm reminding you for the code IGP1234 for today's session. Please remember this code IGP1234. It's very, very important if you want your certificates to be downloaded. So again, those who have not noted it down, I request are all young participants, all attendees to please note down today's uh, code. It is IGP1234. So, dear audience, before we part goodbyes, let me acknowledge my alluring warm attendees who were so patient and attentive throughout the session. Dear listeners, I am much obliged for you all from the core of my deep heart for taking part in today's session. I am confident and positive that you might have gained, picked up and learned something new today, which you will be sure implement in your life or your career growth. My worthy viewers, I would now request you all to please leave a review for today's seminar and also recommend our page if you have learned something from us or if you if we were a little help to you for today. I'll also appeal to all my beautiful onlookers to spread the information among your friends. I repeat again, not to forget collecting your e-certificates. We hope to see you all again in the next upcoming webinar. Till then, thank you so much. Brave the pandemic with smile, sunshine, warmth, and positivity. Stay happy, stay safe, stay happy. Home. I, your host, Dr. Shelly Bish, sign out. Bye bye for today's seminar. It was good to be a part with you. Thank you so much.